Hey guys, I'm the Great Jedi and welcome back to the channel. Now in this video, I'm going to give you guys 10 different tips and tricks that the game doesn't tell you in LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. So without further ado, and me rambling on, telling you guys to subscribe because... Only 78% of you guys who watch my content aren't even subscribed. But you know, that's not important. We're not talking about that right now. If you don't like me or my content, I get it. I'll just cry myself to sleep tonight. Let's just get into the video. Tip number one. Don't waste your studs and look at the different extras. When you first get the game, there can be a lot of things you can buy with your in-game currency known as studs from a variety of characters, ships, rumors, and even extras, and it can be a bit overwhelming. So I'm here to tell you guys to take a look at all the different extras to see what it has to offer because each one changes some aspect of the game. And to also tell you guys which ones you guys should get first. You'll notice fairly on in the game that there are some things that are extremely expensive and you'll just be needing a lot of studs and you'll just always find yourself needing more and more. Well, there's a great way of getting them super fast well, you'll literally have billions of them to spend. That's right, billions with a B. There are a total of 20 different extras in the game, one of which comes for free, which is mumble mode. So if you don't like the voices, then just turn on mumble mode and it'll be like the classic Lego games where they just mumble. And the other 19 extras you need to unlock. And in order to do that, you need quite a bit of studs and a data card. Now, there are a lot of extras that you can get further down the line and you don't need right when you get the game, but to rack up those studs, you want to first buy these stud multipliers, and that should be the very first thing that you should buy in the entire game. So get the stud multipliers 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, and once you have all of them, you'll be at a 3,840 multiplier since it gets all of them multiplied together. And then at that point, you'll just be getting so many studs, it's ridiculous. And you may be looking at the price for that first stud multiplier, which is 1 million studs, but trust me, it's worth it, it's a great investment. You pretty much just gotta grind the first 2 million studs, and then you'll start to see how much those multipliers are helping. Now you may be wondering why I said 2 million studs, and that's because the first stud multiplier costs 1 million, so save up for that, and then you can buy the stud multiplier times 2, so then you can get the studs twice as fast, and then the next multiplier is 2 million studs. But since you're getting it at twice the rate, you're pretty much just getting 1 million studs over again. But then at that point, those multipliers will be multiplied with each other to make a bigger multiplier. So to sum up this tip is to just to check out the different extras to look at what you can take advantage of, what it has to offer, see how much they cost, and invest in those stud multipliers as the first things you buy in the game so that way you can become extremely rich with billions of studs in no time at all in comparison without them. That way when you come across something that costs like 500 million studs, because that will happen, that's just how much one extra costs, you'll be able to buy it no problem at all. Tip number two. Don't rage and wait when seeing someone from the scavenger class. This can be the most annoying and frustrating thing when the game says to be someone from the scavenger class, such as Quill, like when you see this, this, or this. If you started the game from episode 1 like me, you'll see this a bunch of times throughout your time playing and you'll be looking around trying to figure out what you're supposed to do and it can just drive you crazy when it says to be this character and then you switch to this character and then you're exploring around trying to figure out what the game wants for an hour when in reality it's a horrible design on the developer's part and you can't actually do any of that stuff until you unlock the scavenger class special abilities such as the beaker jetpack and net launcher which you can't even get until episode 6 when becoming the ewok or ray in episode 7 so just keep that in mind that you can't do those things until playing through one of those two episodes. So just pass that stuff up until you have the abilities. Tip number three. Learning combos. Now holding certain buttons will actually add available options. For example, if you hold the saber throw button, which is R2, and I'm speaking PlayStation language here because that's the console I have, so feel free to convert it if you have Xbox or PC because I don't know them off the top of my head. Uh, but you can actually target things and then release the button and it will saber throw everything you targeted, which is pretty dang cool if you ask me. And you can also do this with like the mind tricks, 
uh, the scavenger class abilities that we just talked about in the previous tip, and even aiming bombs for villains. You can access all those extra options by holding a button. So to have access to more mind tricks, you can just hold the triangle button, and then for the scavenger class and aiming bombs, you can just hold the circle button, and when in doing that, another menu will pop up, and then you can just choose what you want to do. And speaking of these button combinations, there are a lot of different combos that you can pull off, and I'm not going to be going through all of them since there are a lot of them, but I am going to give you guys a few and give you guys the basic idea. So basically what you want to do is just mix and match the three different attack buttons between square, X, and circle, so then you can just start mixing and matching them. There's a square, square, circle, square, circle, square, square, X, circle, X, X, circle, X, X, square, and there's even a lot more, but I think you get the point. And another cool thing about these moves is that you can actually combo combo moves. So then when you have two different combo moves that have three moves each, you can put them together to do a bigger one. And if you actually spam that last move of a, of a particular combo, you'll be able to do that really cool animation every time, which is really cool for certain characters like General Grievous. Like, check this out. Let's use the combo square, square, circle, and then continue to spam circle. And what's cool about it is that it doesn't actually do that classic normal circle move. It does that last move that he does of the combo over and over again. So it looks a little like this. Grievous slices and dices them two times, takes his foot and grabs the enemy's face, does a flip and lands on them, and then does this unrelenting advance move, which he does in the movies and in Battlefront 2, so that's a really cool feature. So you can just see how much you can play around with all these different combos. So play around with some of the combos and have some fun. Now you may be wondering, what's even the purpose of doing these combos? Well, there's a few. There's different animations, so certain attacks come out faster, hitboxes are different, enemies can't block them, and let's be real here, some of them just straight out look really cool to pull off. Tip number four. Locating collectibles. There are a lot of collectibles in this game that ranges from mini kits, kyber bricks, data cards, unlockable characters, and even unlockable ships, and it can be tough to find out which planet has which collectibles. Like, I know for me, I was trying to figure out what planets have the data cards so I can go search for them because there's over 20 planets and only 19 data cards, and I wanted to get those said multipliers that I talked about in tip one. So, to actually see what each planet has to offer, we actually have to go to the galaxy map. But instead of pressing square to view the map, you want to press X to travel. Now you don't actually have to travel, but when you press that travel button, it will show you how many of each collectible you can get from each planet and destination. So it will tell you on that particular planet, you're going to lock this many cover bricks, this many data cards, this many characters, and this many starships, which is extremely helpful when trying to find where those collectibles are located on which planet. Tip number five. Upgrades! Upgrades, people! Upgrades! Now, the last tip just talked about which collectibles were on each planet, but what about when you're actually on the planet exploring and you still can't find what you're looking for? For example, there can be a data card in Moss Espa or some special mini kit in a level that you're missing and having trouble finding. Well, there's a specific upgrade that shows you exactly where all the collectibles are and this tip is to just to show you to look around through all the special upgrades in the beginning. That way you can get the ones that you want first because there are a lot of upgrades that don't really help in my opinion. But then there's some that are really cool and can add abilities to certain characters or make them more powerful or just straight out help you in your core experience such as the collectible detector upgrade that I mentioned. So take a look at all of them and see which ones you would like to unlock first as you progress getting more kyber bricks. Tip number six. Check your progress. Now, this tip is pretty simple, but definitely helpful because many people, including myself, love to get 100% completion in LEGO games, but it doesn't tell you your percentage when you first get into the game. So how can you tell where you're at percentage-wise? Well, there's two different ways. The first way is to go to Yavin 4 to see your percentage, but let's just be real here. No one wants to travel to Yavin 4 just to check their percentage, especially when you're in the middle of a mission. So the second and most easiest way is to just pause the game and you'll see the percentage of where you're at in that particular area. So if you're in Maz Eisley, Tatooine, it will give you how much you've completed in that area. But to see where you're at in terms of the whole game, 
all you have to do is just press triangle where it says galaxy and it will give you your complete percentage of the overall game. Tip number seven. Stealth. Now, one surprising thing in this game that I didn't expect is that there's a stealth factor to it. That's right, you heard me right. I didn't think that this LEGO game would have any stealth whatsoever, but they gladly proved me wrong. Now granted, it's not huge, but the option is there and you can definitely take enemies out quietly if you choose to do so. All you gotta do is just walk up to them without being noticed and then press the triangle button to do a sneak attack. And once you do that, you'll enter a specific animation taking them out. Now if you try to run up on them or make any noise, then it just won't work. In order to do the sneak attack, you need to be quiet. Nonetheless, it's like I said, the stealth option is there if you want to do it, or you can just continue to go guns blazing. Tip number eight. Play the story. Now, there's a lot of rumors in the game, and to buy all of them, it can be pretty expensive. So, I recommend playing through the story first, which means all the episodes, episodes one through nine, and then going back to get everything because it will help you save a lot of time. It will help you get rumors, which will even save you more studs, and it will even help you get locked abilities that you can only get through the story. So play through the story first. Just rumors alone will help you out because they can help you find collectibles and even help you get through side missions. And those that are wondering, you get those rumors by talking to people. Tip number nine. Settings. Now, this sounds like a very simple tip, and that's because it is. But believe it or not, a lot of people don't even realize what settings they can change because the game doesn't make it obvious to you. When in reality, you can change a ton of different options that can even change how difficult the game can be. For example, the fall recovery setting right here will allow you to fall off cliffs without the penalty of losing your studs. So, Definitely go into your settings and check out how you can shape the experience you want, whether that's you saving studs through fall recovery, removing certain aspects of the HUD, or whatever floats your boat. Just check them out. Tip number 10. Free characters and ships. You can actually get free characters and ships right off the bat with no studs whatsoever using cheat codes. And there are a total of 20 of them so far. So be sure to grab those cheat codes to get that free content right when you get into the game. Now, another cool thing that you can take advantage of is a duplication glitch where you can have multiple people following you. Now, you can only do this if you have the Mandalorian Season 1 DLC and you have access to Mandos. So if you have both of them, what you want to do is set both characters you have to the Mandalorian and then it will add a Grogu. Then you can take that Grogu and put him as a Mandalorian and then just rinse and repeat the process. Then, once you're satisfied with however many followers, you can go ahead and swap out each Mandalorian for whoever you want in the roster. Now, if this process doesn't work for you, then chances are you probably have Xbox or PC in which the process can work slightly different where you can take the characters on the right side of the line and then swap them out for Mando and then it will transfer them over to the left. Then you can go back and start switching out each character one by one. But if you are wanting more details about that process, I have an entire video going over that, so be sure to check it out right after this video. The link is in the description. And if you are also wondering where you can find all of those 20 cheat codes to get that free content, I also made a video going over all 20 and what you can get. So if you're interested in that, then check it out right after this video as well. That link is also in the description. Now, that's going to do it for the 10 tips and tricks that the game doesn't tell you that you should know before playing. So, if you enjoyed this video and want to see a part 2 and want to see other content like this, then be sure to subscribe and let me know in the comment section down below. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys learned something and enjoyed it. And if you did and are interested in LEGO Star Wars content, then please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell down below so you never miss a video. Also, share and like the video down below, only if you enjoyed, of course. And if you didn't, then feel free to dislike it. And if you guys have any constructive criticism for me on how to make these videos better, then please put them all in the comments down below so that way I can make better content in the future. I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day, and may the force be with you, always.